We're in the middle of the country in Leicester on a shopping trip because this JCB is going. So there's a 47.55 John Deere and a 49.55 John Deere, both classic. So we're going to go and have a look at them because Andrew's got itchy feet and wants to buy one. <laughs> Just on our way through Leicester. There are a few people that might live there. Next field of oilseed rape there. A tree in the way, your GPS. Sounds well, doesn't it? They put like this split windscreen so they hide the exhaust and the air intake, and then the later ones then put the oil take down the side. That though, proper cup holders. That's when you're in America, you can have your two cans of beer in your big field. Is that a take deck? No, it's not even a take deck. Like 12 studs, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, 12 stud up. More than the back, isn't it? It's bad, that, isn't it? We're just in Leicester looking at everyone sewing, and that is a field sewn or planted with Christmas trees. Loads of. That's that. It's just something you don't see on a flat field. Christmas tree is growing. Look at this face. For this first uh, slug pelleter on the rollers. They've modified it so that it goes on, but rather than tipping backwards when you fold the rollers out, it's on a rod there with a roller in, so it stays horizontal and pivots. How tricks that? This is the best use of a horse arena. Got some classic tractors in it, and a nice 828. It's a tidy job of a rape drill, this guy's built. Got a technique uh, system, a bit like what we used to have on the other Bateman. Coulter's on the back, pack a roller. That presumably is an old shaker rake to frame. I'm not sure what the coulters are off. It's mint, that. Nah. Is it got, has it got a sign on it just a JCB? 
tree so you can't see now it's behind the trees. Wagon wondering why Andrew's going slow and beeping at him. This is where the fast track was parked last night and there's a diesel leak so we had some diesel arriving today so we filled the fast track up and all the tractors up with diesel to make sure we could fit it in the tank that we wanted to put it in save the driver messing around filling half in one tank and half in another and it seems to be leaking quite high up out the top of the tank so i don't know whether there's a hole or a split or a pipe not on properly but it's not ideal because obviously the tank can fill to sort of this level and it's obviously leaking down here somewhere so we might have to come out and have a look at it but it won't be ideal while it's full of diesel so we'll either have to pump it out or use it and then check it had about an inch of rain in the last 24 hours so these pumps on this wheat field are totally overwhelmed and we've now got i don't know three or four acre flood i've actually been out today checking them i think one was broken so they've repaired that but it's they still can't keep up what we really need to do is they're going to hire a machine to wash this stuff wash the stones out of it and the sand so we're just left with the soil and the clay and then put that in the hollow and reduce the demand on the pumps so that this field and the one behind it the, the drains can be realigned straight through the bank into the ditch which is under that track there so the field the other side of the road was done in the 70s on the side of the ditch in the 70s because that used to be low as well this was all caused by the mining subsidence so the mine behind them trees came underneath here and caused the ground to sink and the ground ended up lower than the stream and that's why it floods bagging up a bit of equine bedding that was a little bit damp that bale though it was one that didn't have a hay cap under so we're pushing it to one side that'll go for biomass and then it'll chip we used to chip it straight off the elevator into the merlot into bags on the merlot but the problem with doing that is you spill it between loads so it's just as easy to chip it on the floor and then load it later on with the gram so Sam's just going to start doing that now Move the damp stuff out of the way. Ah, it's coming on top of me. It's coming out now. It's quite windy, it's just blowing about a little bit. He's just feeding the bales in now. And it just comes off the other end, chopped up, and it makes it extra absorbent because it gives it a bigger surface area when it's chopped up. And it's obviously easier to to rake out in the stables. So it's like confetti now. Zoom in a bit. We've just replaced this solenoid that engages the bed and all the hydraulics and it's running really hot compared to any of the others on the machine. And also it has a red light on it. And a lot of the others light up green when you use them. Does anyone know what's causing it? Because it's highly annoying. And we burned two of them out last week. Or the week before. But we just swapped them with some over here. I think it's a Vickers solenoid valve if anyone knows. I'm just going to put another bale through now. And then we've got a bit more of this bedding. We should bag it up really in little bags for horses. Because it's worth a fortune in little bales. Sam's just loading it up now with the digger. Get more in the bags then. Then it just sort of like fluffing off the end. Multi purpose these seed socks. You can even use them for strapping stuff down on trailers. This is what my dad's generation calls a classic tractor. Me and Andrew's generation call a classic tractor the John Days we've been looking at today. You know, he's done a deal on one of them. See so if you can guess which one it might be. And obviously then the other one's still for sale if anyone's interested. Just doing a quick bearing swap on this bottom bear and it's gone. On the incline order. Goes outside with the ash. This bottom nut's a bit tight, so I can't get enough leverage. So I've got a, an extension socket, a spark plug socket on the end of an extension. We used it like a big pry bar, like a big lever. So now it's undoing. So I can't remember who said, give me a lever long enough and I'll move the world. So 
that's literally what I'm having to do now. Big lever on it. I can't get the bearing off the shaft, so I've got my trusty class punch. That's the old one, totally worn out, jammed up solid. Just sliding the new one on the shaft now. Got this uh, nifty funnel. Gonna use it for when we empty that Bowser to get any of the bits of rust out. So it's like a secondary filter. And then also, someone said yesterday, there's this stuff that you can get that you mix with water, put it in, swash it round. And it's a bit like when you put sort of like jewelry and old coins in a can of Coke or something, it cleans it all. So it's made out of rhubarbs. So anyway, I'll get some of that off eBay and try it. The spot, the difference is yesterday were, the door was open on the 403. We swapped the forks for the bucket. We took the beacon off it. We've moved the number plate from the 936 to the 724. We lifted the weight block up on the 724 and we took a beacon off the 724. So they were the seven differences. I think there's only a couple of people actually got them all. Loads of people never noticed the door open. And then those that noticed the door open never noticed the beacon missing on the 724 as well. That's about it for today. You can watch another video over there. You can subscribe over there. Subscribers have been slowing down a little bit recently. So if you know anyone that wants to watch, tell them about the channel going shopping tomorrow myself so something red maybe and green then i will see so i'll um, see you tomorrow here's a guest outro sent by luke that his dad took see if you can guess what the silhouette is of